This is a Chinese-made Flying V guitar you can find on Amazon for $300. This is my personal Cerberus. This is one that I got a month or two ago now and for about $200 because this one has a hardtail, this one has a Floyd, and this one has 24 frets. Besides that and the paint job, these are the same guitar. And I will talk about the QC of them both in a moment. <clears throat> this is not my guitar personally. This is a loner. Shout out to my friend Cameron. I'm going to link his band down in the description. Go check them out. Uh, this is a rosewood fretboard, uh, polished, rolled off frets, they claim they're stainless steel, I don't know if I believe that, but whatever. QC wise, the, the only issues I'm having right now are on the 11th fret right here. You will get the high E to stick if you pull the, fret, pull the string off the fretboard. And then on the 17th fret, I'm getting a bit of a buzz out, but if you pick lightly or legato, you can't really notice it. And those are both things that any luthier could knock out for you relatively quickly and easily, <clears throat> but not cheaply, probably. <clears throat> so, besides the hardtail, the fret, and the finish, these are the same guitar. So that means they have the same pickups and the same tuners. Tuners are good on both of them. The only issue with the tuners on this one, on the, both of these, because of the headstock design is, they're very close to each other, so it's kind of hard to get in there and really wind them up. The pickups on this one are called the Heavy Metal by uh, West Creek. I don't know who makes them, but that's just what they brand them as. They're good. I prefer how these ones sound. These ones sound amazing. These ones sound very good. They're just not as bright and not as high output. The trim on this is a Floyd Rose Special. And just for the sake of it, here is how well it stays in tune. and that gets my stamp of approval for tuning stability, which is my main worry when it comes to guitars of this price point. <clears throat> so, overall my impressions of this guitar is it's very good, aside from the small fret issues, but that's something that can be easily fixed, especially if when the price point is this low. <clears throat> the way that I got this guitar was the exact same way this one was, whereas the um, action was as low as it could go, and it was just fretting out everywhere, and the truss rod was torqued extremely hard to the point where there's almost back bow. So take it out of the box, new strings, raise this, loosen that, oil up the fretboard, and here we are. Which is exactly what I had to do with this one, which shows with that with this one that the guitar plays the body from <coughs> didn't even touch them. So whatever. <clears throat> neck shape wise, compared to this one, this one's a hair thinner. They are both amazingly feeling necks and they play really easily. <laughs> One thing that is different on this guitar compared to this one again is where the input jack is. This one is Fender style and it's down here, whereas on that one it's Gibson style and it's up here. And this guitar has a nice volute on the back, which definitely is good to have considering there's going to be so much tension from the Floyd Rose. <clears throat> The other thing that's interesting on this guitar is the way that they routed the Floyd cavity is it's nice and tight, almost a little bit too tight, where um, if you try and dive bomb, that's as high as you can go. But if you go and pull up, you have plenty of space. You're going to hit the um, locking nuts on here before you actually hit the uh, bottom out of the body cavity. So if I had to choose, that's how I prefer to have it because, oh, oh no, I'm not going to go any lower than this. Travesty. <clears throat> The frets are, again, very nicely done. There's no rough edges or anything that's catching. Just, you know, right here, right here again. <clears throat> um, again, the action was stupid low when I got it, so I've raised it up now, and it's still incredibly low for my standards, which is, again, makes it play amazing. Overall, what I recommend this guitar, absolutely. The only caveat being is that you need to know how to set up your guitar, or you need to be able to take it to someone who can. So my recommendation would be is if your budget is like $500, get this guitar, get a gig bag for it or a hard shell case. Once you get it from Amazon, 
take it to your local music store, have him set it up, clean up the fretboard for you. Hopefully if it's competent luthier, he can knock on any fret issues you may have. Though the fret issues are very low, very minimal, and it's perfectly playable without getting them addressed. <clears throat> After that, if you have money left over, you can even maybe get new pickups if you don't like how these sound. These sound great, but you know, just another way to upgrade the guitar. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you.